Good morning. Welcome to the Lifebox Media Channel Radio Podcast. Today is my esteemed pleasure to have on at our 150th guest episode, a rock and roll and a country music legend, Mr. B.J. Thomas. Hey, hey, how you doing, man? How you doing, sir? How are you today? Thank you so much for taking the time to come on. Oh, sure. I appreciate you talking to me. Uh, thank you. How you doing? Very good, sir. Very good. Blessed, you know, you know, trying to duck and weave and, you know, stay amongst all the safe things out there. How about yourself? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, you know, we're pretty much uh, locked down as uh, as uh, a lot of people are. And we've been kind of self-quarantined for quite a while. Uh, looking forward to the vaccine and looking forward to getting back to work. You know, musicians were kind of stopped in our tracks. So we're all kind of antsy to get back out there. But we're doing we're doing good. Um, I'm I'm thankful for that. Now it's it's funny you said that because um, and with with all the years you've been touring and congratulations on on the great success. Uh, we're huge fans here as well. I'm a huge fan uh, as well. Um, but this well, is thank you, thank you. Yes, sir. This is probably the least amount of time that you've ever. I mean, the most amount of time you've ever had off in many years, right? Oh yeah. I mean, this is a, probably the most consecutive days that. Uh, my wife and I have been together over the 52 years we've been married. So, uh, it's, it's, but, you know, it's all been, I'm glad I, that we've had each other. For, it's, it's, been, it's been okay, but it, uh, it's had its challenging, challenging moments, I'll tell you. Does she still like you? <laughs> yeah, we still, yeah, we still get along. We get along good. <laughs> we, I, I'm, I'm fun, and I mean that with love and respect, because I, I, seven months in, in, in my place has been, in, you know, it's, it's long, and you have to have love and uh, some sense of humor. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, we've had a, we've had a great marriage, and, uh, um, She's a wonderful girl. That's 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 wonderful. And like I said, I meant that with love and fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, so sir, I mean, so so how have you been doing with everything going on right now? I mean, you know, the the, the thing is, what have you been? I'll, I'll start off from the beginning. What has been you guys' guilty pleasure since you've been home? Are you guys Netflixing it? Are you guys, you know, going out? What 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 are you doing to entertain yourself? Yeah, you know, well, I'm trying to I'm trying to stay fairly active, so I'm, I'll do a little exercising, and I'm kind of work. I'll go. I put. Some, I have. I'm, lately, I've been putting some of my own albums on and singing along with them, just kind of kind of trying to keep my my throat in shape. But yeah, we're doing a lot of Netflix, uh, a lot of TV. We're doing a, a lot of conversation. And, uh, and you know, a lot, lot of things that we don't do enough of, you know. Oh, yeah, and, and you recognize that part. It's funny. You learn to appreciate a lot of those things that, you know, you don't always have. Sir? Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Is it I, I said, I said, we, we get the, we, we also realize some of those things we've missed or don't always have when we've been working so hard. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we we we're way behind on our, you know, on our intimate con conversation. So it's been great to you know to have each other to talk to, and uh, uh, you know, it hasn't it hasn't been all bad. I mean, there have been some uh, some boring times, and then some. You know, you get kind of frustrated without. I had I had a session plan for Muscle Shoals, Alabama, on the fifteenth of July that I had to postpone, and of course all the. All the the dates we had to reschedule, uh, hopefully uh, for next fall, and uh, so that's been a little frustrating. But you know, there, it's it's has some good uh, some good parts of it too that we've been together and and, Love and able to part. communicate. Yeah. And, and, so, you know, yeah, you get to, you get to you know practice some faith and everything else together. I love that. Um, what, what was been one of your guilty pleasures on like Netflixing? Anything special that uh, you know that's really caught your eye that you've really got into? Well, uh, yeah, I got. I have some guilty pleasures. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I like to, you know, I like sugar. I like to eat, so I have to. I have to really try to be as disciplined as I can. All right. And I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to gain. I don't want to gain too much weight while I'm while I'm off. So I've been doing fairly well with that. But that's been, uh, you know, just seems like at times that like, nothing really works unless I unless I have a little ice cream or something. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I, I so I'm having a 
Right. Somebody said to me they lost the COVID nineteen. I says I found it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's right. Man. That's right. And it's been you know it's been one of those things. There's been some as as you and your listeners know. I mean, there's been some anxiety to it. There's I guess there's a little danger involved, and uh, I am an old kind of an older guy now, so I, I it wouldn't be a good time for me to 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 have any problems. So you know, we we've been just as careful as. And, uh, yes, as we can be. Yes, sir. Now, by the way, you have so many things that are kind of turning anniversaries in regards to your music's concerned. I mean, uh, another somebody does somebody wrong songs, 45th anniversary. I mean, raindrops yeah. falling on your head, 50th anniversary. I mean, I, I remember, you know, and I'm, I'm 56, and I remember going to, you know, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and hearing raindrops keep falling on your head and thinking, wow, that's just an awesome song and played the <laughs> death out of a bunch of 45s at it, you know, and kind of how does it feel that, you know, you, your song one is, is is 50 years old and the second part is that it's associated with such a legendary movie? Yeah, you know, the, the whole the whole the whole thing about raindrops is, is a beautiful thing. I mean, it seems like every aspect of that experience and, uh, you know, the result of, you know, how popular the song was, of course, it was the number one record and, uh, just being involved with, uh, Burt Bacharach and Hal David and the, the bicycle scene, all of that is such a great, um, uh, group of memories, memories for me. And I had been working with Mr. Bacharach for all oh, four or five months, uh, before Raindrops came along. I was with Scepter Records. And uh, Mr. Bacharach and Hal David were uh, a big part of that label as they wrote and produced most of the stuff that Dion Warwick did. And uh, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. I'd been working with him, and I just had hooks on the feet. And uh, so he gave me a chance for the song. And, uh, you know, when I went out to do the bicycle scene, I had laryngitis. So my voice was kind of scratchy and... And, and iffy, and, and uh, as it turns out, Mr. Bacharach really liked the way it sounded, and he felt like it really worked for, for what he wanted to wanted to use it for. And so, just everything with the song was uh, worked out really well um, for me, obviously. Uh, and of course, they won Academy Awards and things. And uh, it's just a beautiful memory for me, the whole experience. I think it's a movie now that people should watch more often now and just kind of because, you know, people are getting out there and like I said, they're Netflixing it and everything else. And it's one of those ones I think that I'm going to have to pull up here and, uh, you know, because, you know, we're, we're stationed in for a while. So it's one of those ones I'm going to have to watch. But every once in a while, I'll pull up the scene on YouTube and I'll watch it yeah. and I'll catch the song, you know, and everything else. And I love it. It's just a yeah. great just a great, great memory for me. And, you know, my mom took me to the movies to go see it. So, you know, I, I told my mom the other day, God bless her. She's 78, going to be 79. She was excited. You were coming on the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, tell her hello for me. I definitely yeah. Will. Yeah. Definitely you know, will. just, that was one of the good, great parts about that. It so helped the song was that, that Butch Cassidy was such a good, uh, it was such a good movie. And, uh, you know, it's about time I watched it again myself. There you go. Now, another one, and I just introduced this to somebody the other day because they hadn't heard two songs they hadn't heard of yours, which I had to play, which one is another Somebody Done Somebody Wrong song. That 45 years, man, that's just crazy. And, it, and it's one of my very, you know, I have like five favorites of, of, of your songs, but that's one of my very favorites of your songs. And uh, can you tell us a little bit oh, about that you. song? Yeah, I cut I, I cut that with the same band and producer Chips Moman and uh, the American Studio Group. They're known as the Memphis Boys now, but they had moved from Memphis, uh, and I had been gone with Raindrops, and and uh, they had moved from Memphis where we had been recording to Nashville, and I cut the wrong song in Nashville with Chips. Uh, we had we had cut an album and. Uh, you know, we finished the entire album and we sat behind the control booth there and we played the album down and uh, neither one of us thought there was a hit record on it. We said, I don't, yeah, I don't hear a hit record. And uh, the organ player, Bobby Emmons, said, Chips, uh, play BJ the, uh, that song you just wrote and it, it happened to be wrong song and he played it down and it obviously was just, um, we lo I loved it from the first time I heard it and especially after we recorded it yeah, you know, you always, when you're in the studio and when you're recording, you always want everything to be 
uh, to be successful and to be great. But right. uh, 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 only only a couple of times have I ever been really sure that uh, the song was going to be a hit and commercially successful. And Wrong Song was one of those times. And uh, of course, it was one of my number one records and uh, uh, kind of the first my first really big record in country country music um, where I've, I've kind of always been a little country but I, I've got very little country airplay but this kind of established me in country pretty good too so it was uh, yes, a great song I still love to do it yeah, it, it, it is a great song, and I, I have that on my playlist, and if I just want to feel good or, you know, whatever else, I can <laughs> I can throw on some of your songs, and just it just brings up the mood. And like I said, great memories. Your songs, I can tell you where I'm at, numerous songs of parts of my life when I heard them, and I, and I love that part, so it's kind of one of those things that just is is great. And, and one that I entered, one I, I know you didn't expect me to bring up, but it's Rock and Roll Lullaby, and, and that's because of the fact that, one, I've introduced this to my children and my grandchildren. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, it was one of those things that's just a great song, but I also introduced to my girl this week, or two weeks ago, because we had gone on a road trip, and she had never heard the song before, and I was like, you know, oh, really? this is fantastic. And I was like, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about the inside of that? Yeah, I, was re- I recorded uh, uh, Rock and Roll Lullaby in the village in New York City, at the Electric Lady Land in the Jimi Hendrix studio there. Oh wow! Um, I was I was in Studio B and Stevie Wonder was in Studio uh, Studio A, so it was it was great to kind of be around Stevie and check him out too. And he was really he he was really gonna cutting a huge album at the same time. And uh, Rock and Roll Lullaby was written by uh, Barry Mann and Cynthia Wilde. You know they both you've lost that loving feeling and. Uh, Right. A lot of great classic, uh, classic songs, and uh, you know we we had Dwayne Eddy uh, played on that session, and Dar- Darlene Love sang back up uh, with the Blossoms and the Chiffons, and we kind of had a real authentic thing. I think it probably was the best, the best uh, produced song I've ever had produced by Steve Tyrell and Al Gardoni, and uh, it was a huge record for me. Uh, um, in South America, and was a theme song down there to a, a soap opera, a novella, down there for twenty years. And so it's <laughs> I used to I still go down to Brazil every now and then and sing that song. But uh, that was a, that was another great uh, you know just a, just a, a great writers. That's been one of my fortunate things in my careers. I, I was fortunate enough to work with some of the great writers of my time, and uh, and that's obviously one of, one of the great songs. Yeah, and you and Steve Terrell have that great video online of the two of you from way back in the day doing the song when everybody had long hair, I remember those days, to coming up to Oh, now. yeah, yeah. And that's a great, yeah, that's- great part together. And I, 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 I found that online a couple uh, couple of weeks ago, and I, I was like, this is really cool. So I love watching the transition of times. And, and you have just such a soulful, raspy voice that, I mean, you know, you, you know I'll tell you uh, a song I had only heard you do about five years ago. And I didn't know you had did it. Was uh, you did uh, Suspicious Minds? And yeah, yeah, I had Suspicious Minds, and it, it was also a big record for me in South America. Uh, but yeah, no, I remember when Mark Gaines, Mark Gaines, uh, wrote "Booked on a Feeling in the Eyes of a New York Woman" for me, and he played me Suspicious Minds, and I said, "Man, I, uh, I can't wait to record that." And he said, "Well, B, I'm going to try to get uh, Elvis to cut this," and we had actually been. Uh, attracting Elvis's attention by our our music, and we have been wanting him to come into the American studio there in Memphis and record for a long time, and so he finally did, and and cut suspicious lines and some of the best music of his of his career. So, good, great, great, a great Mark James, a great writer in the Hall of Fame. So. Yeah, great, great, great song. But I, I couldn't believe, you know, and, and that's one of my favorite songs of all time, uh, of, 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 of Elvis's songs and, and of all time, that in Kentucky Rain. And so when I heard you do Suspicious Minds, when I first hear somebody say they're going to do a song that's like your favorite song, you're like, okay, well, you know, and BJ's one of my favorite artists. I want to hear this. And man, the soul you blew out of this, I, I couldn't, I suggest everybody to go check it out because it is, it is absolutely sensational. That uh, and when you do this in concert, it is it is remarkable. I mean, as well. So, uh, you made me a huge, yeah. We had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, bigger fan. Now, did you know the King well? 
Well, I, you know, I've been around him a few, around him a few times, and uh, of course, he was he was an awesome guy. He was beautiful and was in great physical shape uh, during those years that I lived in Memphis. And uh, you know, we we would go if he was in town, and we would hear he was in town. We'd go to the theater, to the Mentian Theater, and he, of course, he used to go in it about every night and watch movies all night. And we'd go over there and at least say hello to him and uh you know he was a wonderful guy he treated me great and uh um he you know, he ended he uh, eventually covered he covered a few of my records i yes. think he i think he liked me and uh, then and of course everybody loved him i mean we 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 loved him dearly and missed him a lot you you got you got any great stories of the king any any little short story to, about the king that you can share <laughs> Well, uh, I, I remember the first time I met him. Uh, I, uh, he was he had come in and uh, and uh, I was sitting in the back um, at the theater and we were kind of trying to you know trying to see him in the dark there as you know, the movie was going on. And uh, in a minute they stopped the movie because I and uh, and they, he called me down and I walked down where he was he was sitting and you know he was such an awesome guy. It was it was hard to get over and shake his hand. He was so awesome. And anyway, he knew all. He knew a lot about me, and he complimented me on my new record. And you know, he was just—he was just so cool. I mean, the guy was just—he. I guess he's the only guy ever that had everything, uh, everything that you ever want as a, as a, as a person uh, and as an artist. And uh, you know, he was just a wonderful guy. But I remember meeting him. I'll never forget that. And he always was a great guy to me. I remember introducing my wife to him, and he. Uh, he was really cute and did all his kind of little lip things and winking <laughs> for my wife and everything. <laughs> I always appreciated that. And he was just a wonderful guy, you know, awesome. Right. Doc God, he was good looking too. I was like, man, that just, why is he going to get all the looks? <laughs> I tell you, man, he was a drop dead, beautiful guy. Yeah. yeah he was yeah. a beautiful looking guy. And, 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 and uh, you know, he kind of, you know, he, he kind of, you know, he, he kind of knew he had the whole, the whole <laughs> works, you know, and, and he and he used it really well, you know. I mean, I think a lot of guys would have uh, would have would have not known uh, what to do with with all right. that he had, but you know, he uh, he did he did well. He's yeah, he's like he's kind of like a Muhammad Muhammad Ali. Sometimes he thought Muhammad was just not really trying to, during a fight, but when you, when you go back now and see a Muhammad Ali fight, you, you see how awesome he is. And that's Absolutely. the way you do with Elvis. You go back and, and, and you look just about everything he did, even the even the movies that weren't necessarily, uh, you know, you know, the all time greatest movies. He represented himself so well, and he handled his part so well that uh, you know, kind of every move is a picture now, and, and and really an example and a motivation for most of us in the music business. So he he, he really got his thing done and. Uh, I think um, I don't think a lot of us really realized how hard it was to be Elvis yes, uh, and the pressure that he went through. And you know, I, I have I have some stories I could tell you about it, but I'm probably not uh, uh, not I, sh I shouldn't. And the, where I was uh, anyway. I mean, you know, he had he, he had a lot of pressure on him to be to be the man at all times, and I, I think that was heavy uh, heavy weight to to carry and. I think he did a he did a, a good job. I, I appreciate that, and, and and I love the direction you went on that, and and and, and it is a very heavy weight, and uh, you you know you you know you're you're a music legend, and and you know, and I know that you can't be on three sixty five and twenty four seven, and I appreciate the way you came right through that. You've always been. I, I've I've met you a few times in the past, and you've always been a first class act to your fans. By the way, and I'll I'll, I'll say that on on air is that. Seen you be a first class act, class act to your fans and and everything. Hey man, I appreciate that. And and uh, I appreciate that a lot. You know, and I'll tell you, and, and I want to cover a little bit of your inspirational music because the fact that uh, okay. coming off of that, that just you know, you you you've come through things. Is it, did you discover that at church? You know, in church when you were growing up, is that what your first touch was with inspirational music? Yeah, you know, I always, always, uh, I grew up with that music. I grew up in Houston, Texas. Of course, it didn't anywhere in the South, and really, it's a universal thing. Uh, we loved, uh, I always loved gospel music. I loved singing in the church and that kind of thing. Uh, when I was a, when I was a kid, and 
I had had my problems with alcohol and drugs, and uh, I kind of hit bottom. And, of course, you know, you don't really think about uh, spiritual things, um, uh, how how valuable and, and, and powerful the, uh, your spiritual life is. And yes, sir. A lot, and a lot of us don't until we hit bottom. And, uh, so I, I had a spiritual awakening, and uh, and that really moved that. When that kind of got around in the business, I, uh, a certain label here from Texas, Word Records, asked me to do an album. So I, I was excited to do it uh, to kind of just express that newfound, uh, um, you know, reality for myself. And then, then, then as it turns out, I had the first uh, platinum album in gospel music. And um, and I had, really, I get the first four platinum albums. And uh, I had a lot of success there. And I loved being involved. With, the, with that music, but you know, as it, as it turns out, I wasn't going to be a minister, and you know, I, I, I wasn't going to just pursue, uh, you know, spiritual things with the uh, with my music for forever, and so that's what's kind of what motivated me to, to uh, not necessarily leave gospel music, but I had to kind of uh, extricate myself from from the gospel business and get back to you know just the real. Uh, uh, Music that I've always been making, but I still make, uh, I still make, a, you know, spiritual comments and, and certain spiritual songs, and and I always did that. And Gus Elvis was a great example of an artist who was right at the top, who still had no uh, hesitation to do gospel music, and that was a, he was a big influence there too. I, lo- I love that. And that's why it says the damnedest thing is, is that, you know, his Grammys are all for uh, spiritual music that, yeah. you know, that didn't have any except for when he passed away. You know, I mean, afterwards, I'm like, if, if the king don't have any Grammys, I'll, I'll be damned. How can anybody else not have any? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I just I just think that's a, uh, you know, even the Beatles, you know, they only have a few. I, mean, I think that's a big injustice sometimes that that happens when somebody is so big. Of course, Elvis should have had, should have had a, as many, <laughs> you know, should have had 20 or 30, 20 or 30 or 40 Grammys, but uh, he loved gospel music and he kind of freed up uh, a lot of people to, to do gospel music if they wanted to because, uh, hey, if he did it, it's okay for us. Uh, just just a couple questions more, if you will, sir. Who were your inspirations growing up in music? Who did you really dig that was like when when you were a young cat growing up that you said, "Man, that's 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 the deal." You know, when you first were cutting your teeth, who did you yeah. want to be like? Well, I had you know I, I had a lot of uh, you know country influences when I was a kid, and and also gospel gospel people like you know Red Foley and and Tennessee Ernie Ford and stuff like that when I was very young, but my Really, my first motivation to, that really kind of moved me to my core was a guy like Jackie Wilson. Oh yeah, um, and Bobby Bland, and I, I loved all the all the great black artists of my time. And you know, I, I think I, my generation, um, uh, really, that's the best music, uh, some of the best music of all time. And I think that the black guys, uh, entertainers, singers, writers, performers, they were doing it better than anyone for sure. Yeah. So I always admired, you know, Jackie, Jackie Wilson, Sam Cooke, uh, Ray Charles. I loved those guys. And when I had my band, I, we had a band when we were 15 years old. We got a little band together. And that's all we did. We did R&B music. And, uh, and, and so that was one of my biggest influences. I've never really made, the, you know, been considered an R&B artist, but I got a lot of my... My, a lot of my motivation from a guy, a guy like Bobby, Bobby Blue Bland. That's that. Yeah, that's absolutely. I mean, some some of your. I mean, uh, you just named that almost everybody in my favorites. If you throw you, you know, like you and the king in there, you got you got it taken care of right right there, BJ. I mean, you know, but I mean, and I appreciate that because I think that not many, not enough people know about the Jackie Wilsons and the Sam Cooks and guys like that of the uh, of the of the time that's just unbelievable. The Wilson Pickets and the Percy Sledges and all those great you know sounds of, of yeah. I mean, I think a guy like the Jackie Wilson. I mean, there never would have been a, a Michael. Jordan. Jordan, if it, I mean, Michael Jackson, if it hadn't have been the Jackie Wilson, because uh, Jackie was the first guy that, that, that just he looked right. I mean, every move was a uh, he was a beautiful entertainer. I saw him many times, and uh, uh, he was a big inspiration to me. And then I actually became a, uh, met Mr. Bland when I was about 13, 14 years old, and wow. he kind of took me under 
he took me under his wing and he let me hang out with him and at his shows and things. And so, you know, I just, I just love those guys and the music just wouldn't, wouldn't be the same without them. You know, they laid the boards down for everyone else. Yes, sir. I love that. What do you have coming up? Uh, I know obviously touring right now is a, is a hard thing right now. It's on hold. But um, and, and when you open up your tour, please come back on Lifebox Media Channel and or you have a new record out or anything else. Believe me, we'll love to have you back on. But what do you have coming up? Man, right I now? appreciate that. And I'd love to. Yeah. Well, I had, a, you know, I had a, a session planned for uh, July 15th to, for Muscle Shoals, Alabama with uh, Dan Penn and Billy Lawson, two great songwriters. And we've known each other forever and, uh, and had never really recorded together so we were going in the muscle shows uh then we had to of course uh postpone that and we're still all in on it and we're going into muscle shows as soon as we've got the vaccine and we're able to do it i'm gonna go in there and do some do some new, new music and i'm really looking forward to that and uh and where can everybody get a hold of you you're all you're all on social media correct yeah i'm on dj com. i'm on facebook and uh all, 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 all that stuff, you know. Right, right. I want everybody to go out and pick up all, buy all your music and merchandise and everything you have out there. <laughs> in fact, it's funny, Muscle Shoals you just mentioned, I have a guest coming on next week about that, and I did, I'm uneducated on that area, and I'm getting suddenly now, all of a sudden, you're just another one of those magical connections that everybody's talking about, and I swear to you, next Tuesday, I have a gentleman on uh, coming on, uh, Mike Mustert. Monster and uh, and and he's he's from he lives right there and it's it's crazy that the musicians that are coming out of that area. Oh yeah, I mean there's, there's such such a great music that has has come out of there and everybody from the Rolling Stones to Aretha Franklin and I've recorded there before but nothing really major until this time and uh, you know we're going to go in and make an album and I hope it hope it's going to be good. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, it's been a true pleasure, uh, you know, to have you on the Lifebox Media Channel Radio Podcast. You're welcome on any time. You just reach out anytime, sir. You have something coming up or anything else, or you just want to talk about music. And it is always a pleasure uh, to to speak music or just to have a conversation with you, sir. Man, I appreciate that, brother, and uh, I appreciate you talking to me. And I'll I'll definitely look you up when the, when this music gets done and and. Uh, Thank you, man. It's been fun. Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll and country music legend B.J. Thomas on the Lifebox Media Channel Radio Podcast. Sir, thank you so much. You have a safe and wonderful day. And thank you for celebrating the 150th guest episode of our show. I reached hey, out. And I, asked, <laughs> I asked just for you for this episode. And so I'm really glad that you came on. Beautiful, man. I really I really enjoyed it, and I had a, had a good time, and looking forward to the next time. Thank, thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate it. Take care, sir. You have a wonderful day. God bless. All right, man. You too. Bye-bye.